We're in West London. We've got amazing houses. We've not got Hugh Grant. Guys, where are we? Well, we're at a place where there isn't just one station, but actually two brought together. And that means disused spaces. It's one of my favourite places in London, Notting Hill Gate. We've also found a dog. We've adopted a dog. This dog is now part of the team. Hi everyone, welcome to another amazing edition of the Hidden London Hangouts. My name's Alex Grunton and today me and the crew are going somewhere absolutely amazing. It hides in plain sight it behind a couple of barrier doors and when you get inside it's so so cool. We're going to Notting Hill Gate today. As I said before, I don't do this on my own. I've got three amazing people from the London Transport Museum to guide us through the history of the capital and to make us laugh too. First of all, Chris Nix. Hi there, Alex. I, I was feeling a bit left out there with you two with your Texan tuxedos on. You just brought <laughs> a bolo tie away from done, weren't you? So there you go. I'm going to have to put mine on. Join you. That's fair. Do you know, put that little, you know, that uh, microphone muff that you've got, put that on your head as well. Give us a proper <laughs> look at this, right? Because yeah. this is, look at this. How's that? Oh, do you know, you've just become <laughs> Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, he's still standing. Uh, City Holloway, are you? Am I happy that you know we clap your hands? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Uh, we're very excited because we did have a great trip down to this station, but unfortunately Laura couldn't join us because a massive log landed on your track, didn't it? Do you know what? It's, it's such, such bad luck and I have major major FOMO guys. So I've got lighting issues today as well. So I'm sorry, I'm kind of shrouded half in light, half in shadow. Um, not that I don't want the sun to shine, I do. Um, but I was ready to go. I was suited and booted, ready for the site visit. I'd run to the station because I was running a little bit late. I arrived and everything was canceled. No trains, tree on the track, at least two hours to sort it out. I mean, I was utterly gutted guys. I was, I was genuinely very sad. It's gutting because we know what there is in this station and we know that it's right up uh, Laura's little snicket. So uh, we are gutted. But anyway, Notting Hill Gate is where we are today. Uh, first of all, we need the history lesson because it's a station of two halves, isn't it, Chris? It is. So uh, the first station to arrive there uh, was built by the Metropolitan Railway, opened uh, as an extension in 1868 uh, when the Metropolitan Line was extended from Paddington through to Gloucester Road, opened on the 1st of October. Um, it was joined uh, quite a while later by the Central London Railway, we now to know today as the Central Line, uh, in uh, 1900 on the 30th of July. And those stations were on either side of the road. Um, so as with a number of stations around the system, you had to cross the road to transfer between them. Um, the, uh, the Metropolitan Line station got a, a slight rebuild and a modernization with a CW Clark building in uh, 1927. And then uh, perhaps the most dramatic thing was the joining of the stations, which was, uh, which was done in the very late 50s, where the surface buildings were removed, uh, Ticket Hall built underneath the road in a subway, which also serves as a pedestrian subway. At the same time, uh, escalators were installed to replace the lifts that served the Central London Railway. And that's it. Marvellous stuff, excellent. There's a little bundle there, and we're gonna unpick all of those changes as we go with pictures and video and everything else. Uh, but first of all, let's just um, have a look at Notting Hill in the 1830s, because it wasn't what it looks like today, was it? Look at that, Sids. It's glorious, um, Notting Hill in it's all its urban joy. You know what? I love this image. I found it on our uh, IMS and I just thought it was great because it shows the actual original Notting Hill gate. And I remember because I used to be quite sort of, well, let's not say obsessed, but um, I really loved that part of London because um, Notting Hill, the movie was my favorite movie 
when I was a kid. And the first time I ever came to London, I stayed in Notting Hill with my parents and my sister. So I always had this kind of um, pull towards that part of town. And yeah, that's the original gate. And um, I think Notting, I believe stands, so as in Notting Hill, stands for a farm that used to stand around that hill, which was something like Knott Farm or something. And then it was Notting Hill. And that's how it came to be known as what it is today. She's a classy girl and she, she knows her stuff. This is fantastic. And um, when we talk about the way that tube lines were built, there were two ways, right? There was you dig a trench and then you cover it over. That's cut and cover. And then you dig tunnels deep underground with drills. Well, the district line, which is what we know now, I suppose, the circle line, um, was done by cut and cover. And this is a picture of that, isn't it, Chris? So, yeah, this is the building of the Metropolitan Line Railway extension. And that is Notting Hill Gate. Uh, station being constructed you can see the arches uh either side of the the, the platform there i mean just say by the way we, no, sorry to interrupt that when we talk about the metropolitan line because the metropolitan line doesn't run to that station anymore but it's because the met used to be much bigger than it is now isn't it mm -hmm. that's right and there was the gradual joining up of the metropolitan line and the metropolitan district uh railway to create what we know today as the uh, circle line Amazing mm -hmm. stuff. And um, and the station building itself back in 1868 was a bit of a corker, wasn't it? I mean, look at that law. That's a, I mean, that's a grand building. Literally took the word out of my mouth. I was just thinking in my head, what a grand building. It's really lovely. And the picture before as well about the, um, the construction. You look at pictures like that, don't you, and think, how does that ever turn out to be these amazing buildings and stations and constructions that it ends up? as such as, you know, this picture, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So Metropolitan Line, uh, Circle District as we know it now, that's what the building used to look like on one side well, of the road. But of actually, it, this was the proposed looking look of the building. Um, and this was the first engineering diagram, but they had to economize. So actually what was built was only a single story building. Which interestingly, we'll see sure. in a moment. That's, do you know, <laughs> I'm so glad you said that, Sid, because I hadn't clocked. I thought it looks a lot bigger than the other stuff I've seen. But anyway, happy days. Um, but then on the other side of the road, the central line was being built around 1900, wasn't it? And look, I mean, look at this grimy old hovel. So <laughs> this is the entrance into compression chamber. Um, mm -hmm. So the the digging face of the tunnel is behind that, and the whole thing is is uh, under under pressure. Yeah. Um, uh, meanwhile, in the oh. uh, Station. They're doing, I mean, it's funny. Number one, did you see in the previous picture there was a lump of four by two holding the door open? That made me laugh. It's sort of like, you know, don't you worry, this building site's good. But the but look at this here. That I love all this because from previous episodes, central line stations just had those white tiles, didn't they? They were very, very plain looking, mm -hmm. but so neat when they were being constructed. Good tilers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love I love the fact that the platform is just a <laughs> simple plank of wood with some, you know, what look almost like, well, those those planks that would look like um, sticks. Uh, I, yeah, ice cream sticks to me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. But very neat, Law. I mean, I know you like your tiles, but it wasn't much to write home about, was it? I don't know what lollies you lot are eating, but I wouldn't eat a lolly off that stick. It's like covered in oil and coal. Very careful about what she puts in her mouth. Uh, so um, what Absolutely. do you reckon, though, Law? Uh, the tiling is amazing and I know you make references to um, you know if someone could tile my bathroom or my kitchen like that but I mean this is phenomenal right back in the day and they can get that so neat and that lovely curvature um, and I look at these pictures and I know for us it's very kind of um, emotive and um, it takes my mind back to think like what conditions they worked in and how tough this job must have been you know it really is. It really is. But, you know, interestingly, when you do like your tiles law, you'll love the next picture because it's in the in the booking hall of the central line. Beautiful, beautiful bit, though, wasn't it, Chris? Was. I, I do love the fact, by the way, that these two workmen, it's an unusual shot of two workmen not actually working. Uh, most, of, <laughs> most of these shots, they're at least pretending to do something in shop. And they're also wearing suits. Quite right. Yeah. And, and I presume that was a USB cable strung across the uh, <laughs> bit up there. Was that was that some sort of, uh, you know, Internet cable? Not. Um, look at this, though, Law. Beautiful. More reminiscent, really, of um, some of the more beautiful tube stations we see elsewhere in London. It, re it really is beautiful. And the tiling here is phenomenal as well. And I love the um, 
ticket booth there on the left, it reminds me of the one that's in situ on our Euston tour, um, which is now a virtual tour as well. So luckily people can get to go and have a little sneaky peek at some areas down there as well. Um, but there's so much going on in this picture with the um, lovely signage and the clocks and the lamps and the wooden doors. And yeah, look, so amazing. It's glorious. I, I teeth loads of those signs and have them in my house. Do you know, I love the fact that you and I would say that. I'll teeth that. But there's Chris going like, well, we wouldn't be doing that. We wouldn't be doing Meanwhile, Sorry, totally <laughs> meanwhile back in the world of the appropriate, over here on the left-hand side, you notice there's... Uh, um, there's a metaphor here because the, you can go with the dogs. Today, hyphenated. I love that. Today, hyphenated. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. We still can't work out though, Chris, can we, what colour those bottom tiles would be? Dark coloured with a freeze, but we don't know what colour they would be. I don't know off the top of my head. No, but I, want, very... I want them to be green. I really want them to be that lovely dark green. But I think knows? they were from something that I read a few... Uh, I can't remember, some time ago. Um, I think they were a sort of light brownish or sort of a brownish colour. Well, they're beautiful nonetheless, they're stunning. And, um, you know, you, you talked about it earlier, City, about the um, cost cutting to make the station building um, affordable. There it is, there's your one floor um, station exterior on the Metropolitan Line side. Mm -hmm. So what effectively would have been your district from Circle today? Yeah, and doesn't it have a reminiscence of, say, Marlborough Road or yeah. Lords? You know, it's all in that same vein. And um, definitely, even St Mary's Whitechapel, it's got that sense of it. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of nice, even though these stations don't survive in many places anymore, just to see how each part of the network had its own identity like that um and that you can kind of link them all together i love I really the idea love as that. well you know that when they you know there must have been some dusty old office somewhere in london with a man <laughs> with a pocket watch and, a, and, a, and a, a lovely waistcoat sitting there going oh i'm gonna build another station oh, <laughs> Charles walter clark plans get those dusty old files out Oh, Leslie Green Station. Here we go. You want one of those green tiles, yeah. colours on the wall. Well, uh, Leslie, I love the idea yeah. of Leslie Green was so, I mean, he had, to, he had to do such an extensive job that he he got so stressed. He he died fairly yeah. early after he finished all that job. So maybe it was just too much to handle, too much well, dust. I mean, you know, working with you guys is stressful. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> so, um, but in, inside, Chris, inside that station, was actually this beautiful canopied, um, set of platforms, wasn't there? Yeah, just just like um, Marlborough Road and Lords, these stations are essentially built in cuttings, and then mm. a canopy is built over the top. And now a lot of these kind of stations have been decked over in their history, so the canopy is long gone. But um, uh, here we have it, um, and quite a lot of nice signage on this station as well. Notice the mm. uh, the station sign. If we just jump over here, that now familiar diamond backed balls mm -hmm. yeah because it started off didn't it just it just brings back i love this it brings back for anybody who started watching these hidden london hangouts by the way we've got episode after episode that you can go back and binge watch but the story of the tube has evolved over time and, and the the, the roundel as we know it the round tube side used to be a diamond didn't it chris uh, yeah, on the on the Metropolitan line, they uh, they like to do their own thing, and so they use diamond back on it. Um, we've seen that in another number of other uh, stations that we've been to of this this vintage. That's a very uh, uh, Laura. That's a very uh, delicate oval teen sign. Would you ever consider yourself to be draping yourself out of bed? So I was just thinking the um, you, image can next you zoom to it. Out? Is... I can't see Chris. Oval teens top left. Uh, there you go. Ah, so I was just thinking the Scotland by rail Flying Scotsman team trip to Scotland on the Flying Scotsman, but that we wouldn't be drinking Oval Team. That's what I was thinking I was, oh, as I imagine? was looking at, at oh, this then. I can't imagine what we, a soft drink when we go out, a soft drink. What on earth? Bovril. Bovril, our favourite. <laughs> we can do Bovril. That's I love the, sinking, um, sinking feeling. I would, if I'd you not offered me a Bovril, I'd get that. <laughs> Wait, I do what is a bovril again? Canopy here uh, as well, though. Bovril, ima imagine something like crumbling up an oxo into uh, a mug yeah, of hot water. Drink, yeah. Oh, is it like a fake <laughs> Gravy in a broth? mug. Beefy. <laughs> Gravy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> beefy. Uh, beautiful. Um, Eddie Swan as well. They were light bulb manufacturers, weren't they? Eddie Swan? Uh, yes, yeah, so that looks like an Edison screw light bulb. 
well exactly <laughs> well that's um, all good is, um, is anybody else thinking that on that kind of archway glass panel part of the canopy that if it was stained glass it would have like a lovely art decoy kind of feel Sunshine. to it as well mm. you're right. you, know, right. when, um, you know when you're kind of having a stroll outside <laughs> like that and um the, 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 the light beams <laughs> yeah, that's how I stroll these days and the light beams like uh, shine through the clouds and you get that lovely kind of um, simultaneous like beams of light that come through that's what I think of when I look at that lovely kind of mm -hmm. uh, glass archway there Laura are you yeah. hungry by any chance <laughs> do you know well, what I, I actually am said, and my I stomach is rumbling <laughs> <laughs> yes canapé a canapé yeah I, it, just to say by the way I think there's a chocolate machine on the if, if you yeah, are a bit hungry there's, there's a chocolate machine down there on the platform there you go, just on there on the right I love that yes um, I am down at the bottom Beautiful, a nice, nice bar of fruit and nut will keep uh, the uh, hunger at bay for Laura there. And uh, we said about a, a rebuild, didn't we, for Charles Walter Clark, our Clarkitecture uh, rebuild of the station, guys. Since it was uh, quite a, an elegant building, really, in the rebuild, wasn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? And I mean, again, it's reminiscent of or those other ones that we've been um, discovering and talking about in previous episodes, like Edgware Road. Uh, and other ones like it. Um, it's kind of, it was funny to me, the first time I saw this photo, I thought, Mr. Notting Hill Gate Station? Yeah. Oh, uh, but of course that sounds for Metropolitan Railway, but I was like, it's <laughs> weird that Fabulous. they would name him as a man. And isn't um, it good but, as well to see Dolland and Aitchison, the um, opticians on the oh, right hand yeah. side, I, there's I, a I'm name from the past. It, I, after last week's mistake with Thorny Island, I better not zoom in on this. <laughs> Well, also, just been... cockerel, <laughs> Jay Cock. Uh, can I go there. in that shop? Catch up with the gag there. <laughs> can I go in that shop? Oh, dear, oh, dear. How beautiful. <laughs> How beautiful. Right, OK. Don't let yourself don't let yourself go red, Al. Uh, right, so here we are in Notting Hill Gate Station. And as we said before, um, we're now that lockdown's easing. We can get out and have a look at these places for you. Uh, get into the places that normally are locked off. And when we arrived at Notting Hill gate station uh, yesterday the the team were amazing uh, but they said there's not really much to see down there let us be the judge of that guys uh, Danny and his crew at the station gave us a bit of a tour but Danny became quite useful to us as you are about to see we started off didn't we Chris by heading to one of the central line platforms and a gate that was off there thank you So, if you get into this space, you can see how the station's arranged. This is built underneath a relatively narrow road. They couldn't put the lines side by side, so there's only one other way to do it. One there. And one down there. And one down there. It's incredible, really. And that's quite a view down there. I mean, a minute ago, we just saw a train disappear. It's weird. I was saying to Danny from the station, how this, it's a bit like walking down a multi-storey car park when you come into this building. And Danny <laughs> explained that this is because it's two stations yeah. effectively knocked into one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how quite often we talk about stations when they change from lift to escalator, the entrance moves. Yeah. Well, here you've got the switchback arrangement. So you kind of, a bit like Piccadilly Circus, where you kind of go in one direction and then come back on yourself to get back yeah. onto where the lifts would have originally gone. So that's, that's mm. why you've got that. And a teeny tiny escalator, Laura, sorry you couldn't be here. A teeny tiny escalator to get from this level going west to that level going east. Yeah. Is it normal that the eastbound track is lower than the westbound? Is this convention or is this just kind of accidentally because they dug it that way? That's a good question. I'm thinking Chancery Lane has got a similar arrangement yeah. and I think that's eastbound. Well, it's, 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 it's largely on the central line yeah. that they do it. Yeah. Um, I don't really think there's any. I think only the Piccadilly line at South Kensington does it as well. That's true, yeah. So, and that's because of some like yeah. re restrictions in the ground there. But by yeah. and large, they're normally next to one another, and this arrangement's quite rare. Cool. Well, I think that way, if we can get out of the way of the wind, because to be honest, it's playing havoc with my hair. <laughs> oh, what about look mine? Down <laughs> you look amazing. Okay. Let's go that way, which is where the lifts are and um, the posters, yeah? Oh, it was really grubby down there, wasn't it? I don't, Sid, did you put the gloves on? Because I tried to avoid the uh, green gloves. Yeah, I put them on um, only because I, 
you know what, I've, these, these, these days I've got so much hay fever and stuff. And then when we go into dusty places, my hands just get so dry and uncomfortable for such a long time. So I try to wear the gloves as much as I can. Although oh, they, your hands get clammy, don't they? Blah, 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 blah. But don't you worry, Lord, because you avoided all that because uh, you swerved this particular trip. But coming up is a, one bit of film that you are going to love because we started to investigate the joy and delight of the tiles. What, what I particularly loved about that was your little hand movement with what you were saying, the joy of the tiles. <laughs> Would you like me to be creepy? <laughs> I was like, you're going in a tunnel. Um, but what you said before about the station, people like staff sometimes, and it, it's about perception, isn't it? And what kind of gets us going and what, where we get the goosebump moments. Because for so many people, it is just an old dusty tunnel that has a lot of storage items in it. And then we go in, and we get ridiculously giddy and excited. Um, so I'm excited to see what you guys got giddy and excited about. Well, I'll tell you one particular example of this, and the, and the footage is in this episode, okay? Uh, one of the guys on the station said, there is this other tunnel that we don't really bother with because it's really cold and damp down there, but you probably don't want to see it. So Sidney and I just thought, nah, we won't bother with that. Chris, intrepid, shoots down there like a rat down a sewer, and you'll see the footage in a minute, and it is stunning. But let's have a look at the tiles. I've just learned to not take anybody's word for it when they say there's nothing there. I'll always go and check it, even if it's just a cupboard. <laughs> I mean, I would have I would have joined you if I uh, hadn't already been so dusty, and also somebody had to look after Alex. Well, I mean, you know, I'd start chewing furniture if I'm left on my own. Anyway, have a look at me. <laughs> I mean, it's filthy down here, but it's amazing. Yeah. First of all, major kudos to Danny, because he thought he was just going to have a normal shift here at Notting Hill. But actually, he's ended up being cameraman, <laughs> tripod carrier, lighting expert. It sounds amazing. more fun to me. It does. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are in this the disused bit of Notting Hill Gate tube station, and or immediately you can see the tiles up there. Yeah. We, we noticed when we were at Euston, didn't we, yeah. that little glass tiles, and here, these are glass tiles, yeah. which are shoved in place by bitumen and... Sand, yeah. yeah, but they're, they're a little bit different from the City and South London ones. These are, of course, central line ones, and you can see they're a little bit longer and in some places a bit thicker than the, the CSLR ones. But isn't this handiwork amazing? Look at those corners. Why can you never get a bathroom to be tiled like this these days? You've got home enough. That's, Fair enough. That's the key thing. But I mean, they're razor sharp, aren't they? I, yeah. I love a vaulted ceiling. I mean, this has been here since 1900, guys. So this is 120 years old. It's incredible. 21. It's incredible. And it's still stuck to the wall. Yeah. There's one particular thing here, VP22. What's that mean? Ventilation point 22. And of course, Chris, that's what that is over there. Making all that noise. Actually, you're relatively quiet for a yeah, these big fans. Um, but uh, yeah, this has got a big uh, fan inside it. Here's the motor for it uh, with belt drive. And that's why it's quite nice and cool in here. It's chucking all the hot air out and helping to pull cool air in behind it. And a natural ventilation shaft because this used to be the spiral staircase, didn't it? We yeah. can see that, that gap there, which is where the stairs used to be. Mm -hmm. And so this was the spiral staircase, the emergency staircase. Lift over there, and here's one entrance, and here's the other. And just over there, you've also got the platform. So it's kind of amazing to see the layout and how it's changed. It's but funny how when we talk about disused stations, the basics are the same, aren't they? Lifts, stairs to get out, and then one day they just stop being used. Yeah. It's but there is one thing you don't always find that I can see over there, which is posters. Let's yeah, go. Oh, Laura will be so gutted to miss this. We'll take some back for it. Good stuff. Photos, anyway. Now, here's where it gets really interesting, Laura, because um, I hadn't quite spotted this when we first went into the this old lift and uh, staircase area. Um, but there are so many original posters still on the wall. Some of them concreted over a bit, but some of them are still there to see. Are you looking forward to a little bit of this? There's this, this is the major, major FOMO bit that I was talking about before. Because if you're going to miss anything, I've just missed some amazing in situ posters that are, you know, you know there is some really good preservation of colour and, um, oh, yeah, show me, hit me, hit me. Well, here we go, because um, first of all, grab your um, heavily scented um, cold remedies and I shall rub some on your chest. Here it comes. Oh, wow, look at that. So you see that it's, <laughs> it's been concrete filled in here. 
So there's actually two rows of posters. You see how that poster is different, different to, to that, that. One, isn't it? and then you know, so at one point they've just put concrete in here and you know completely over the posters. And I mean, apparently, this is, it can be your lucky day. Well, it always is with buy, you guys. Buying premium, you see, always yeah. is. And when they call this concrete, is this to try to in, increase airflow? Is that do they sort of narrow the pipe? passageway to make airflow faster is that why they do this kind of there's so much concrete poured here i think it's probably i don't know maybe access or not sure here yeah uh, i'm just looking to see if there was anything obvious but what to be honest it could be that it's a cable run or a, uh, a drainage duct or something like that underneath it could be a variety of reasons but there'll be one for them to have bothered putting the concrete in. But it is remarkable, I mean, all the tile work is still around here, and as you say, the precision of the tile work that is so, so impressive. I know you guys love squatting, but I'm going to stand up. It's cool, isn't it? It's absolutely So what else have we got poster-wise? Yeah. Do you see any? They're pretty, look at those over there. Something 3,000. The great thing about this is our viewers will probably know these posters. Millions. Well, that's... So it's these speaks millions. Society radio speaker. Ah. Well, one thing that is worth noting here is to remember when we had David Bounds on uh, the, the poster episode, expert. yeah, mm -hmm. in season one. He was talking about the use of oranges and reds, um, and because we're underground, they don't yeah. fade in the way that you do above ground, so it's quite pink, common to see the, it. Look yeah. at the fuchsia pink, really. It's all comes vivid out. colours, isn't it? Yellow down there. Bright, bright colours. I suppose in, in many ways it, it helped make the tube enticing as a place to be. And the premium bonds there. Look at that. Amazing. Table model. Ta Look oh, at that. It's a yeah. fridge. Is that a fridge? What Alex, could that be? Oh, what we got? thinking about your holidays already. Oh, yeah, go on. So you, have to... you can take quells to prevent travel sickness. I love quells. <laughs> but look at the... Is that peeling off the wall? What's that? Can you lift it up? What is there? Oh, look at this. Look at that. What's that? Rubble. Oh, it's Vix. Vix. Vapor rub. Grab your finger at the top corner. I'll see if I can grab a photo. Cold. Go quick when you rub on Vic. That is brilliant. Look at that. Wouldn't you just want to get a wet wipe out and just clean these up a bit? Yeah, the problem though would be, the problem is that you'd probably ruin the paper. You would, you would. It'd probably just okay. fall apart, wouldn't it? Well, should we head up? And then this is, this bit here is, this is your way up to the, and look, there you go, there's your original stairs. And they've just made a concrete slide off the side of it. Love a slide. Love a slide. There's a train. Isn't it just? I isn't think it just? Perhaps the best surviving poster is just around here, Children's Society. Oh, look. Oh, wow, look. Wow, that's nice. And just behind us, on the central line, though. Isn't it incredible? Sorry about that, Law. I'm sorry you missed it, but did you feel vicariously like you were there? Do, do you know what I did? Because you guys are so brilliant at bringing this to life. And what a lovely little mini museum they've got down there that I genuinely didn't didn't know um, looked like that. So, so cool that you put that on the camera and shown us today. Better still, you talk about a mini museum. This is the bit that we couldn't get our head around. While we were there, and Danny is brilliant. Danny is so lovely. And he just said, I don't know whether you're interested, but the other side of that wall there, it looks like there's another corridor with a load of posters that are intact. It's like, what? So he showed us the potential entry point to this museum. Now this, I love this. A lovely Danny who's filming for us today from the tube station. He's not just great with a camera, he's also got a bit of information as well. And this particular wall is fascinating because we can see that it's already been blocked up once, but we can see there's a second block up here. Mm -hmm. And Danny reckons that the other side of this is a corridor down to the other platform, which is absolutely littered with posters. Uh, but hasn't been accessible but it's been blocked since up. about 10 years ago. Yeah. So it's all blocked up, but yeah. the other side of this wall 
is believed to be a corridor full, full of the of most technicolor posters. Yeah, well, should we start a petition to break through this wall again one more time? <laughs> just, just nudge it, see if you can get through, see what happens. No, it's not going to no. move. But ah. it's, it, this is what the thing about I love about Hidden London Hangouts. We just find out from the amazing people who work for London Underground extra secrets that we'd never have found. Yeah. I, I've been told that if you rub the lamp three times, yeah, you get dust on it. You yeah. get dusty hands. Yeah. There's a lovely lady there who was looking in as well. These people getting off the tube, they're fascinated by what we're talking about. Saturday at 6pm, every Saturday. <laughs> Easy. Always marketing. You see, to me, of all the bits in that station that we had and hadn't seen, that was the bit that intrigued me the most. And I don't know whether you noticed it, Chris, but in that wall that was bricked up, there was a pipe that went through and I was so, I wanted to get one of those little, you know, the cameras that have got like a, a wire on them, like a grain of rice camera. I wanted to poke it in the hole and see if I could get the other side of it to see what was there. You know, we do actually have one of those, um, which uh, we used in early parts of um, here in London to be able to do exactly that. Um, uh, ah, yes, <laughs> I remember. Uh, and a couple of other places where we were confronted by a bricked up wall or, or something that was inaccessible. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, if we'd have had it, we could have done that. But I think what's amazing to me as somebody who you know looks after the museum's collection is how these you know, ephemeral things, you know, posters are, are quite delicate things, determinedly hanging on the wall decades after they were put there, treated abominably, you know, grime and air blasting past them all the time. And yet still, there they are, you can still see the adverts. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, and the even the one, the Vix one, had a tile stuck to the back of it. So the tile gave way, but the poster did not. I just think it's fabulous. And I mean, looking at the, the, the pictures that appear to be in that bricked up, um, in that in that bricked up corridor, mm -hmm. you've got things like the ideal home show, you've got all sorts of products. And it staggers me that all these years on, you know, if you look down most roads these days and sometimes stations and stuff, there's dog-eared posters unfolding a bit and tatty at the edges. These have been, these have remained intact and uh, preserved with this amazing pop of colour that comes at you, Nor. The colour is actually phenomenal, isn't it? And I think um, we made reference to it in the poster episode um, with David Bounds. Obviously, um, I think City referenced it as well, that there's not a lot of light pollution to dilute the colour. So the colour can remain and you can get really bold kind of primary colours still existing, which is such a contrast to um, sometimes the more muted colours that are down there in terms of the tiles or the, the paint. Um, and obviously there's a lot of dust and kind of dirt down there as well. So a lot of it is grey and, you know, black. Um, so the, the, the posters just, off, just ooze this kind of little um, essence of life that breathed down there once. And I think it's, you know, it's not just a poster. It represents so much more than that. And I think that's why we all get so very excited when we see them and see them in such good tact down there as well. It's like the travel sickness tablets. You think to yourself, that implies that there is an S, a, a, like a desire to travel, you know, get on a coach or a sharabang or whatever they called it, or a train or in getting bundled into a car, a heavily overloaded car, and go somewhere to the seaside. I just think it, it, they are a real snapshot of history and what life was like at the time. Would you not agree, Chris? Because you're a historian, so you'd know this. Uh, yeah, I, I think they are. It, it, it does tell you quite a lot about the society that is being advertised to at the time. And I guess boat travel as well was uh, was quite uh, was a lot more common uh, back then, too. So, yeah, they, they are fascinating little capsules. And I'm also curious to know, Laura, which one would you tee if you were given permission? <laughs> oh, interesting. Do you know what's really funny is I, uh, Quell still exists now, don't they? Because that's what I give my kids when they get travel sick, I think. Do you? I still use yeah. Vic if that helps um, in my personal life. I do enjoy a bit of Vic. <laughs> um, bit of Vic fun. Uh, what do you think then, Law? Would you have the Quells or would you have the Vic or would you? Premium bonds. <laughs> Children's society. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Idol Home Show because I love the contrast of the colour between the blue and that kind of neon ready pink. But I specifically love the way they're just holding the roof up with their little little hands. I think that's really lovely. So I'm going to go for that one. Teeny tiny roof. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, of course, you you know you'd be forgiven for wondering why it is that parts of these stations become disused, and it's because the station changes modifications are made, 
Some are knocked into one, like Charing Cross was basically two stations that became three stations that effectively became one station. And now it's just still one station. Um, work that one out. Uh, but uh, Notting Hill Gate was a very similar station in that work got done on it and it did render some parts of the station useless. And if we look, Chris, back at the Central Line uh, booking hall originally, um, it, it looked nice enough, but it was never going to be any use as a big station for lots and lots of passengers, was it? Yeah, here, here we can see some of the uh, slightly clumsy, creeping modifications, a bit like when we were at Holloway Road, if you remember, the really unsympathetic automatic uh, ticket machines uh, added in, uh, which I think we discovered the reason they're away from the wall is because you couldn't access the, you had to access the ticket all around the back or something. Um, so, yeah, um, the... In the late 50s, we get this design to bring the station together. Uh, oh, I love a post the law. Um, and here you can see, if I just pull in onto the, the diagram, the how it's going to be done. And that Isn't that can... super clever that the, the actual cut out of the stomach diagram is like an arrowhead? Yeah. Um, kind of pointing you in the direction of progress and efficiency and, and getting things moving and getting things done. I really like that. How yeah, and, that? and even the entrance of the station, the four entrances underneath, isn't that neat? It's so cool, but look, how do you see this? Because you're always so good at interpreting Spotting. art. I just didn't, I didn't twig that at all. What, what I really love about art and posters though is I know some people kind of you know it's a specific meaning and it needs to be this but for me it's all about just what you see and what it makes you feel as a like an individual my mind wanders crazily with stuff like this but yeah I just I just saw the arrowhead and just thought you know in the direction of progress amazing absolutely amazing and mm -hmm. um, if we zoom out Chris what does the text say because it's always a joy to see what gibberish they put on the uh, on the posters yeah, I just while I'm zooming out, you can see that thing I referred to on the film at the start there about how the escalators go out one way and then come back on themselves so that you yeah. can keep the entrance more or less where it was uh, rather than having to shift it down the street. And as you said earlier, that was like Piccadilly Circus, wasn't it? Where um, one chamber, if you like, was used to, to get to all the different levels of the station. And the easiest way to do that is to zigzag the escalators, really. Mm. So that you're not taking up too much of a footprint underground. Um, any any um, comedy lines in the uh, poster? It's all quite straightforward on the uh, copy there. Obviously, a very, very blunt copywriter there. What, what you don't see on this is what the uh, station entrances are going to look like. You can see they're just represented quite simply on that diagram. But this um, is what they look like. Very sort of clean, clinical, 50s. Mm -hmm kind of design um and they're not that dissimilar today you know, um, I have you know to what they you know the what they best. remind me of is they remind me a bit of the entrances into the subway in new york and interestingly that whole area of notting hill is kind of known for being a bit like uh, little america a lot of americans live around there so it's and interesting you know, how it happens we were stood there only yesterday and the pret just down there on the left a big shout out to crucii who gave us free coffee and a free sandwich yesterday. Love you, Crucii. Um, <laughs> what I love about that as well, you see the modernity of the signs, public subway, public labs, all that thing. And then you see the old road sign above it, mm. which is really cool to show how times were changing. I just think it's lovely. So all of it's, you know, pretty much as it is now. Look at that up there. A40 Shepherd's Bush. Great stuff. Great stuff. And more photographs to come as well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nix. Look at that. You see, that's yeah. so much more familiar, isn't it, really? Ticket gates. Yeah, you can see it's it's straightforward, open design, um, just designed to get people in there at the station as quickly as possible, minimal clutter. An incredible. It's almost quite trick. clinical, isn't it? Mm. 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 But funnily enough, of the time, so modern, you know, strip lights, it felt like, you know, it's like Victorian houses. You know, this house that I'm in, they, they hardboarded the panel doors because flat fronts on doors were more modern. You know, these days we rip all that off again to expose the beauty, but once upon a time, I'll make it all nice and neat. No places for gather, the dust to gather and all that kind of thing. Incredible stuff, incredible. You know, it did its job. It probably delighted. It reminds me a bit actually, when you look at those of the 
um, ticket offices in the Victoria Line stations when they were mm -hmm. built in the 60s. Very, very clinical looking, very straight and, and simple. Um, we promised earlier the extra footage uh, because um, it wasn't Laura the Explorer, it was Chris the Explorer yesterday who decided to go behind this very unassuming brown door um, and find something which, um, it's almost like a film set under Notting Hill Gate, isn't it, Chris? It is. I, I found myself kind of channeling my inner Blofeld. It felt like a kind of a, um, a James Bond set when he got down there. Um, it, it really is just this vast space that's hard to describe and easier to see. How big was it? I mean, you know, you're what, nearly six foot? It, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... it's quite a long way down um the the actual shaft itself is about the size of a uh of a lift shaft maybe a tiny bit wider but height wise um, i guess it must be about um 10 meters wow 12 meters high something like that um but then he's got these tunnels kind of racing off into the uh should we have a look yeah let's have a look let's have a look this is exciting Honestly, and they said this isn't really worth a look. Nah, don't worry about that down there. That's incredible. It's like, well, Laura, um, it is like a film set, isn't it? It is. <laughs> what I'm particularly loving is that that was Chris's inner Blofeld villain kind of Bond moment, wearing a very practical red fleece. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best thing, right? It was so dark down there. There's like one light bulb in this vast space, so it really did take some some strong lighting to actually be able to see anything. Uh, here you go. This is um, this is a still of the space. Give you an idea of what it's what it's like. Can I ask as well? You see that disc that's there? Does that mm -hmm. rotate on a pivot yeah. to shut yeah. off? Yeah. It's wow. a damper. Yeah, it's called a damper, so you use it just to shut off that tunnel if you want to stop the ventilation. It's, going got, it's got some serious, like, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark vibes to this, doesn't it? I like that. I was going with, like, it's a bit like a spaceship. You know when they can just kind of, like, move through the spacecraft and there's all the tunnels coming off the main bits? I was yeah. thinking it looks a bit like that. It, it's remarkably unchanged from when it was uh, when it was first built. Here's back when they had when they bothered to uh, put some of those Edison light bulbs in um, <laughs> originally. Yeah, look, look at that. that. It is look how look how clean the the concrete is there compared to how it was yesterday when you were there, Chris. And I'm assuming, Chris, that the the lines that we're seeing on those things are planks of wood that yeah, were put there right. to. It's I the mean. Shimmering. Even uh, the carpentry to get that to where it was was mm -hmm. pretty blooming impressive. The, yeah. you know, the, the, to get wooden planks to fit a circular hole is pretty impressive before they pour the concrete. The, 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 there's several amazing things about this place. You know, having stood in a lot of lift shafts, it felt very much like a lift shaft, but it's, you know, it's been rough, rough cast in the ground like this. But above the head is this um, uh, steel deck, this corrugated steel deck, which is carrying the central line over the top. So as well as all this kind of wind noise going on, you've got the occasional rumble of a central line train passing casually overhead. It really is quite a, quite a space to experience. I'm, I'm just incredible, absolutely incredible. And these things just sit underneath London, you know, completely unassuming, not screaming out their name or anything else like that until we literally look behind doors and find them. It is just this most blissful existence. What a lovely way to spend the morning that was. Honestly, it was lovely. So sorry you couldn't join us, Lord, but honestly, we'll make sure the wood from the trees gets removed from the tracks next time. Yeah, you guys need to make sure that there's no um, blown over trees on my track, please, so I can join you. That would be, that would be cool. 
We will okay. make sure that that happens. Uh, a beautiful canter around Notting Hill Gate Station. And thank you so much, so much to the incredibly friendly team at the station for uh, letting us in, giving us the access that we needed, but also to Danny particularly. Thank you uh, for being our cameraman as well for the day, because that was just awesome. It meant that we could explore and have fun without worrying about filming it. So it's great. Um, notes, queries and questions, as always. Uh, thanks very much for all your correspondence. We do... Um, we really look forward to it and we love the stories that we hear as well about how much uh, these hangouts are, are doing for you. An interesting story, picture actually, Chris, you'll see um, a lovely photograph that was sent in um, from, um, uh, this was uh, John Vincent, Queen Street 24 on Instagram. Um, and he says, great episode on maps this week. I thought you might like to see my live feed underground map. Um, no way. Happy. Yeah, look at that. Uh, Isn't that live impressive? feed. Yeah live feed so obviously uh, the um uh, line up to epping's doing rather well um and a uh, notice an mk socket there chris as well <laughs> uh, bonus point oh jesus just tell by the position of the uh, the screw holes screws um, the screws the, uh, i can't believe we did that but it's pretty yeah, impressive so, isn't it wait what did you say chris the, the position, position of the position what? Of the screw, screw holes. So if you the look screw hole, screw holes, okay. above the plug, and there's one hidden by the plug, whereas normally on a domestic socket now, you'd find them on the uh, left, left and right. right. Bottom. You do realise, Chris, by the way, I purposely asked John to send that photograph because of that detail. I've got four others, but none of the others have got the socket on it. Uh, but it's pretty impressive, you know? I think, Law, I think that would do all right for your disco, wouldn't it? I was just about to say, I'm putting on my um, disco moquette socks, turning the lights down and having a little party on a Saturday night with that on. That's cool. It's fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. It does highlight as well where the tracker net feed works, doesn't it? Because it, it just looks like about half of the, well, at least a third of the tube network isn't working on that. <laughs> <laughs> So, Wait, so how does service. this work? I'm confused about how this works. How does what? What is it? How is? Um, <laughs> <laughs> how does it light up? Uh, well, you plug light in that grey plug. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what the deal is actually. Thanks. I don't know. It's um, I I I I I don't even know. And in a way, I don't care. It just looks lovely doesn't it? Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Chris will know. How does it work, Chris? I'm presuming, uh, without actually knowing um, the full detail, but I'm presuming it's taking a, a feed of the tracker net, which knows where the, the trains are on the on the tube, but some of the areas don't have a, a live feed to sense where the trains are, uh, and I think oh. that's why you've got the lights out. They run on estimated, well, they run on the timetabled um, uh, position of where the trains should be. He's a good boy, uh -huh. He's a good boy, good boy. Thank you very much for that, uh, Queen Street 24. It's lovely. Um, you know, we were asking last week as well, one, one of our lovely viewers asked, um, where are the platforms where trains and tubes occupy the same space? Dan messaged and said, and I think actually, Chris, this is something that you hinted at um, when we were chatting on WhatsApp the other day. Um, just watching the Maps episode, the question about shared track and platforms, all of them met at Rickmansworth, Chorleywood, Chalfont, Namisham, I would count, I'd say. Was that not what you said? And I think Dan gets a big ding. Correct. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, also, um, Rob Gerling says, thanks uh, to the team for unearthing my follow the lights. So my memory wasn't fading. Any idea when they were in operation? I think the late 50s, as I was quite young. They did look so, so sad and abandoned in the store. Perhaps they could be born again sometime in the museum. I really would never have believed that I could get my wife, Beverly. Hello, Beverly. It reminds me a bit of, um, what's the, was it Abigail's party? Do you remember? Beverly, would you like a cheesy pineapple-y one, Ange? Um, hello, Beverly. Um, she, get her an interested in tube stations and trains. She now really looks forward to six o'clock on Saturday. Uh, a real help through the pandemic. I had a look on Charlie's Facebook page, Charlie the Signaller. Um, what an amazing and quite honestly brave girl for doing what she wants in spite of others around her. She's wonderful. Hopefully we'll see her again. Have fun. Thanks again uh, to the team and everything you do. Uh, so hello to you and to the lovely Beverly. Um, also, Aaron says, can I ask if there's been or could be a platform for art or art on the underground focused episode? We've kind of done that. As I agree with what has been said, they are works of art. Regards your Londoner in spirit, Aaron in Lancashire. Lancashire, these the tentacles are spreading, Chris. Uh, yeah, it's great. Um, from Australia to Lancashire, we uh, <laughs> with um, I think the the idea of platform for art one is is interesting, but because 
there's so much of platform for arts um, or uh, work out there, art on the underground out there. Um, it, we we keep on coming up on it episode on episode, so I think we're, we're sort of gradually covering it everywhere we go, aren't we? Yeah, totally. Um, we've got a, a you give you a run for your money on as well, Chris. Stuart says, uh, love the episode on maps. I've got every pocket tube map from 2000. I love the way they all fit info into a small space in the pocket map. That's that's possibly a record law. Every map from 2000. I think that's super, super awesome. I would like them to send in a little picture of their favourite, I don't know, five or six, so we can have a little peek at what they've got. That would be that would be pretty cool. It would. Um, uh, Dazzling Daz says he um, he was stuck on Horny Island for a while there on that map episode, Chris. I think you were as well, Alex. Best place to be, I'd say. Uh, Paul <laughs> Giffen says, uh, what a fantastic episode, maps galore. Uh, collecting carriage maps myself, vintage and modern, all the lines except the Jubilee line, just need to frame them. She said, we've really unearthed <laughs> quite a group of amazing people, really. We sure have. Thanks for that. <laughs> there Thanks you go. Glad <laughs> someone said something. Uh, and then uh, what else we've got here? Um, Alex says, I've got a treasured and dog-eared bus map from 1951, which also has the border of Little Roundels. If only the trolley bus routes were all still there, I could take the 581 from Woodford down to Bloomsbury. By the way, Alex... <laughs> By the way, Alex's China cabinet might end up as one of the stars of the show. Look at that. That's amazing. It's right. So it's my late grandma. It's full of, full of um, uh, Hill London mugs by the end of this series. Oh, I've got a couple of tube trains in there, an escalator. It's all folded up small. Um, it's great. That was, um, you know, that sort of service wear from the 1950s, post-war, you know, relatively Utility cheap. Wood, wear. Look nice. mm -hmm. What's it called again? Utility wear. Utility wear. It's one of those, but I can't help, I just can't part with it. It's grandma's, so it's got to stay. But there's all sorts in there. Loads Alex, do you much. use the glasses in it or are they kind of for show? Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. What's the point so of having I, stuff just for show? Can I direct, well, just check in. Can I direct you to the middle level, the two, are they champagne flutes in the middle kind of window? I'd like a glass of one of those, please. Right, hang on a minute, yeah. I'll show you, right? Stay there. Me Let's too, actually, that'd be nice. Yeah, City and I's oh, names on those two, what? please. Maybe a pink fizz, please. So want, here we go, so back again now. So this yes. one is look at this on that. The so that is actually, a, can you see, it's oh, a look. House of Lords. Oh, wow. Champagne flute. Have you got a receipt for that, Alex? How did you snuffle that <laughs> was, one, Mr. Grundon? You know, I'd like to say it was a leaving do, but a uh, leaving present, but no one bothered when I left. Uh, so uh, it was all good. But um, I bought those, so you can buy them in the House of Lords shop. If you ever get the chance to go into the House of Commons House of Lords, there's two shops. There's loads of cafes and restaurants and bars, but there's also a couple of shops, and they are absolutely stunning. So they're rather nice. So, Law, you can have a glass of that whenever you want. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Right. Okay. So. Just put those back. There's sherry schooners in there. There's, um, you know, there's Alka-Seltzers in a jar. It's all there. Anyway, uh, thank you very much indeed, Laura, as always, for a wonderful episode. Thank you. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there. I'm, I'm really gutted. That was, a, that was a terrible one to miss. I am cursing the tree still. Um, but this happens. Life happens. And um, lovely episode. Thank you guys for going down there. Really cool. Beautiful stuff. Siddy, before we go... We did something rather special to mark your um, love of Notting Hill. Hmm. Chris, what do we do? So I said earlier that Notting Hill, the film, is one of my absolute favourite films of all time. I mean, I've watched it so many times, I probably could just recite the whole thing. But I wanted to walk up Portobello Road with Chris to just show him, um, you know, which parts of it are my favourite, which houses I would very much like to own and live in, um, you know, it, it's in another lifetime, I guess. Um, and I wanted us to walk all the way up to the travel book shop, which is of course the shop where, which, uh, which Hugh Grant's character owns in the, uh, in the movie. As you can see, it's kind of a long walk, but it's so beautiful around there. It was a really nice day. Uh, and there's something about that film that I just, love and uh you know I, as i as i said to the guys yesterday i'm just a girl standing in front of a roundel asking you to like it oh since we absolutely love you and you know the funny thing about it is that when you look at that whole street and i know it felt maybe like a long walk 
But the beauty of London as it reopens is that that street will be lined with stalls. Yeah. So that's the, the absolute beating heart of market land on a Saturday, isn't it really? Well, you can see it right there. It's yeah. got the stalls lined out in the streets of 41, 42. I wonder who gets stall 41 and 42. They must be well photographed, those. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Amazing stuff. Sidi, thank you so much for being, as always, our partner in Grime. Um, Mr. Thank Nix, you. Um, you are wonderful and intrepid. Uh, and you've also got a bit of a secret up your sleeve as well, haven't you? I, I don't know I can follow that, though. I don't think I, 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 could, I could, could do the... Uh, You're the, doing the, the impressions! I'm going to say uh, no to your very kind request. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, tremendous. Yes. Tremendous. It was, wasn't it? A BAFTA, a, a BAFTA award winning, <laughs> that was. Absolutely. Uh, so we tried. Uh, so, yes, there is something wonderful happening next week, isn't there? Look at that, Law. There oh, you go. Look. It's coming back, babe. It's coming back. And delighted that uh, one of the posters out of our collection has been reawakened itself uh, by Transport for London um, to signify the reawakening uh, of, uh, of London uh, for people on 17th of May. Well, indeed, everywhere in the UK on the 17th. Great one, isn't it, Law? Beautiful poster. It is. I love the like muted colours at the top and then it gets brighter towards the middle where, you know, to show that awakening. Um, and there's everything for your pleasure. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that does it guys and we're yeah. here to pleasure everybody it's wonderful so well done to us do you uh, well notice done. that once again bovril is center <laughs> stage in the oh yeah God, there's guinness. also a port guys port, a port. Yes. <laughs> oh, go. and a guinness <laughs> Hidden London Hangouts Port Night is back. That's good. Um, of course, you know, Chris, you've hinted at it. Um, next Monday is when museums are uh, opening up. Um, and, Excellent. And next, uh, next Saturday's episode of the Hidden London Hangouts, we're going to be um, at the museum uh, on opening day, uh, talking to uh, punters, talking to very important people and uh, seeing how the museum's changed uh, during lockdown so uh, so all good stuff if you want so thanks very much team uh, all, as always gorgeous if you want to get in touch with us use instagram it's probably the easiest way alex grunton chris nix hidden london law city holloway and at lt museum you found us on youtube thank you very much like comment and subscribe down below drop us questions anything you want to ask us about the tube or uh, the history of the capital subterranean style um, and also if there's any place you want us to go or things you want us to investigate on the future hidden london hangout Drop us a note there. And also kind words are always quite nice as well. Your stories about what uh, the Hangouts mean to you are always gratefully received. We'll be back next week, back at the museum. Have yourself a great day and stay safe.